Turning Red is Pixar's latest feature film, and also probably one of the more mature as far as its themes and humor goes, blending the emotional and humorous writing the studio is known for with a really unique coming-of-age story. Set in the early 2000s in Toronto, Canada, and mixed together with the Chinese culture that stems from the main character, Mei's ancestral family, we're left with a really cool backdrop for an animated film. And with such an interesting world comes a ton of Easter eggs, little references, and secrets, all hidden in every nook and cranny on screen, many of which you probably didn't catch the first time you watched. So today, we're taking a deep dive into Pixar's Turning Red to uncover all all the Easter eggs one by one. Let's get started. First off, let's take a look at all the Canada Easter eggs. Turning Red takes place in Toronto, Canada, and the filmmakers did a great job emphasizing lots of little Canadian staples throughout the world, and not just the iconic maple leaf. There are a lot of references here. It makes sense since the director and much of the main cast are Canadians. For instance, the little moose toy in the front of May's mom's car is a pretty clearly Canadian thing to have in your vehicle, not to mention her clear respect and admiration for Celine Dion. Who do they think they are? Celine Dion? They even proudly display Canadian maple syrup in the convenience store. Being set in Toronto, you'll also notice that the streetcar has the same colors as the Toronto Transit Commission, and we also see the vibrant bohemian-styled Kensington Market, an iconic part of the city. And for those of us down in the US or outside of Canada, who are more used to Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts, we may not know about Tim Hortons. It's a pretty iconic Canadian donut spot, and we see one of their boxes on May's family table. The Daisy Mart we see is also a real-life Canadian chain of convenience stores. We can also catch a glimpse of the CN Tower, which held the record for tallest building or freestanding structure for over three decades, and is still the tallest structure in the Western Hemisphere. We see it in a couple shots throughout the movie, and we also catch the Rogers Center, home to the Toronto Blue Jays. And we can also see a couple kids in purple jerseys, likely nods to the Toronto Raptors. And there are also kids wearing hockey jerseys, that are reminiscent to the Toronto Maple Leafs from the NHL. May and her friends go to Lester B. Pearson Middle School. Lester B. Pearson was the 14th Prime Minister of Canada. The temple is loosely based on the Cham Shan Temple, one of the oldest temples in Toronto, where they don't worship a god but their ancestors, just like the temple in Turning Red. Another interesting reference is in the school, behind the math teacher's desk. There's a 1980 Winter Games hockey poster. Hockey being such a popular sport in Canada, it makes sense. But this is actually a reference to the 1980 Olympics, when the US beat the Soviet Union in hockey with a 4-3 upset. This was considered a huge victory because the Russians were favorites, and the American hockey team was composed mostly of amateur players. Disney even made a movie about it called Miracle. But let's talk about the references to the early 2000s. Taking place in 2002, Turning Red gives us an absolute ton of references to the late 90s and early 2000s. The filmmakers did a great job rebuilding that era right down to the last detail. When it comes to toys, there's probably nothing more iconic to the late 90s and early 2000s than the Tamagotchi, which May proudly displays clipped to her backpack. Tamagotchis were little handheld digital pets that came out of Japan and were made by Bandai. This was back when mobile gaming had a lot of limitations, though the most obvious reference to that era is the boy band 4Town which is a clear parody of popular boy bands from the late 90s and early 2000s, like the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. During their concert, they're even wearing all white, like the Backstreet Boys did for their album Millennium. And when they perform the ritual, they do the dance moves from the Backstreet Boy video, Everybody. That Tween Beat magazine they're on is also a reference to the Teen Beat magazine from the 90s and early 2000s, which covered boy bands. A lot of the characters' fashion sense also perfectly fits that era. One example being the skater culture, with vans, graphic tees, and boards, and the goth subculture made up of clothing that you would see in Hot Topics around that time, as well as plenty of emo haircuts and styles. Miriam reflects the skater and grunge styles that were popular in that era, from the plaid and beanie hat to the skater t-shirt and vans. And of course, friendship bracelets were a staple of the 90s. When we see the stickers on May's instrument case, one of them says Y2K A-OK. -okay. This is a reference to the Y2K scare in 2000. Y2K stands for year 2000, and it was a huge scare in the late 90s that computer errors related to date formatting would occur when the date turned to 2000. 
Speaking of computers, that PC in the living room looks like an IBM PC 340. May's backpack says Bag Sport, which is a parody to the popular Jansport brand. And that isn't the only brand parody we see. There's also the Jokia phone, a clear reference to Nokia phones that were popular in the mid 2000s. And of course, the Discman, which was the ultimate portable entertainment device in the early 2000s. May also names the red panda statues in front of the temple, Bart and Lisa, a pretty clear reference to The Simpsons. In the early 2000s, when skateboarding really made its way into the mainstream, the Tech Deck fingerboards became a popular toy and were a popular way to kill time when in school. It's also kind of funny that we see a lot of little 1970s references sprinkled into the world. From lava lamps to smiley face pins, much of this stuff stuck around and remained popular even into the mid 2000s. We see Priya reading a book called Nightfall, the final chapter, which is pretty clearly a parody of the Twilight books, which came out in 2005. Also, notice the handshake that Priya and May do. It's the same one that Will and Jazz do in the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Abby is also wearing an early 2000s version of the Baby G Shock watch, and May is seen with a calculator watch. And this shot of May running in her panda form definitely looks like the Quicksilver running shot. Now let's talk about the Pixar and Disney Easter eggs. Pixar is well known for adding little nods to other movies in their library through hidden Easter eggs, and Turning Red has its fair share. First and foremost, let's get the A113 out of the way. For those who don't know, A113 is an Easter egg that's been put in every Pixar movie. It refers to the classroom at CalArts, used by animation students, including Pixar co-founder John Lasseter. This time, you can spot that number all the way at the end of the movie, during the end credits. If you look at the four-town ticket, you'll see that the seat number is A113. And then, of course, we can't have a Pixar movie without the Luxo Ball. That's the iconic toy ball from the Pixar logo sequence. In turning red, you can spot it in the pool when May and her friends are sitting on the roof. Next up, Bao dumplings are eaten throughout the movie. These, of course, came from Pixar's short film, Bao. That short was also directed by Domi Shi, who directed Turning Red. And we know those are Bao dumplings because when May is walking down the street, after getting off the trolley, there's a sign for Bao Restaurant. Other Pixar shorts are referenced as well. We see the bunny from 2020's Burrow on the back of May's sketchbook, and also Pearl from Pixar's 2018 short, Pearl, on May's desk. When the girls are walking to the convenience store, Miriam's skateboard has two stickers on it that are references to Toy Story. First, we see a decal of Sid's skull from his shirt. And then also, we have a much smaller Buzz Lightyear of Star Command insignia sticker as well. And speaking of Toy Story, it's worth pointing out that many of the sky shots look very similar to the iconic Toy Story cloud background from Andy's room. And remember the Jokia phones? Well, one of them has a rainbow unicorn sticker on it from Inside Out. And speaking of stickers, there's a tiny Nemo sticker in the bathroom as well. When Mr. Gao draws a circle to open a door to the astral plane, it's similar to Pixar's other film, Soul, as they also sit around chanting in the hopes to enter the astral planes. Another couple subtle Pixar references include the fact that Abby is dressed in a similar pattern as Boo's door from Monsters, Inc., and May's teacher kind of resembles a younger version of Charles Muntz from Up. Also, when May says the cashier her friends are oogling looks like a hobo, she may be channeling her inner Edna Mode from The Incredibles. He looks like a hobo. This is a hobo suit, darling. You can't be seen in it. When she comes back in panda form to oogle him herself, she taps her foot like Thumper in the Disney classic Bambi. And May's bunny slippers might be a reference to Mushu's line from Mulan, saying his bunny slippers just ran for cover. Oh, I think my bunny slippers just ran for cover. Come on, scare me, girl! But also, this smiling breakfast definitely looks familiar as well. Look, you get porridge! And it's happy to see you! And the box of kittens might be a nod to Oliver and company, mainly because there is one orange kitten in the box. If you're a fan of Disney Easter eggs, you're probably familiar with hidden Mickeys, which are representations of Mickey Mouse, subtly hidden within shots of Disney movies. There are a couple of hidden Mickeys in the pond made out of lily pads, and then also the donut holes the family has for breakfast make up a hidden Mickey as well. And these balloons at the party could also be a hidden Mickey as well. 
And we might be pushing it, but the dumplings kind of form one too. And last, but certainly not least, when May is running to the stadium in panda form, she runs past the iconic Pizza Planet truck. This vehicle is truly timeless, as it really gets around from movie to movie. For those who don't know, this was the vehicle that Woody and Buzz hitched a ride on in the original Toy Story, and Pixar has placed it in their movies frequently ever since. But let's talk about the Chinese cultural Easter eggs. Obviously, Chinese culture plays a huge role in the plot of the movie. We see a lot of fortune plants in the movie, which are usually sold as lucky bamboo plants. These actually got really popular in the early 2000s, which makes them fit the setting really well. The Chinese call the lucky bamboo Fu Guizhu, which signify luck and fortune, power and honor, and bamboo. These panda statues are essentially Chinese guardian lion statues that traditionally stood in front of Chinese imperial palaces, but just swapped with pandas instead. Again, more panda statues that are in the style of the traditional guardian lions. These guardian lions are usually depicted in pairs. When used as statues, the pair would consist of a male leaning his paw on an embroidered ball, which in imperial contexts represents supremacy over the world, and a female restraining a playful cub that's on its back, which represents nurture. These guardian lions are actually traditionally called foo dogs as well. These red panda roof charms are also quite interesting. These walking beasts, or crouching beasts, were statues placed alongside the ridge of official buildings of the Chinese Empire, and reserved only for official buildings like palaces and temples. The old woman is performing a qigong meditation. This is an ancient Chinese healing practice and translates to the master of one's energy, and Mr. Gao uses a Chinese exorcism sword. And this wooden fish drum, as well as the Tibetan singing bowl and golden fang shoe seven metal ball, are used traditionally for cleansing rituals. But let's move on to the Japanese cultural easter eggs. In addition to the Canadian and Chinese influences throughout the movie, the animation definitely takes a lot of influence from Japanese animation. The character's eyes being exaggerated in various situations is a staple of anime and manga. There is also the glowing glasses anime trope we catch when Mei's dad is cooking dinner. When May notices a boy she has a crush on, her eyes and the effects switch to a heavily anime-inspired style. And then immediately after, when she notices the embarrassing poster on her locker, her reaction is also heavily inspired by anime. Same with the girl's reaction to the boy band. The movie really utilizes these stylizations to emphasize various emotions and reactions, and it's always really cool. Even these little insert shots often reference anime, like the spinning pen is done in a similar way as Sailor Moon. Speaking of Sailor Moon, there are a lot of little influences from the anime. Take the shot of Mei jumping into the sky with the moon in the background. And this backdrop of the kids up on the roof is definitely inspired strongly by Sailor Moon. They essentially take the Sailor Moon Tokyo shot and converted it to Toronto, which looks really nice. Lots of little shots like the shaman using a sword to shoot an energy blast have a very distinct anime feel to them or Mei launching the dodgeball with extreme power like it's some kind of battle sequence. Sticking with the Japanese themes, in Mei's room, we see a collection of toys with oversized heads, and they look to be references to the Japanese Senryo Company, a company that produces kawaii collectibles, which focuses on cuteness. The characters here seem to be an homage to Hello Kitty, Rilakkuma Bear, Batsmaru Penguin, and Kuropi the Frog. This bamboo forest is also a reference to the Japanese Kyoto bamboo forest. And then, there is a really cool reference during the final battle between Mei and her mom to Dragon Ball GT. The two giant panda forms are strikingly similar to the Super Saiyan 4 Red Ape from Dragon Ball GT. Even Ming's transformation in front of the Red Moon is an homage to the Red Ape sequence, which is really awesome. And woof, that is a lot of easter eggs. Pixar really knows how to pack them into their movies. Let us know in the comment section which one was your favorite, or if we missed anything. Be sure to hit that notification bell and check out our other Turning Red videos this week. But most importantly, stay wicked.